let everybody else also join and then we'll start. Hello. I would like to welcome all. And we are going to... Hello. Yeah, are you going to hear me? Yes. So we are here to discuss isomorphic JavaScript. And with me, uh, I, uh, like, let's start. Uh, so I am Makbul Khan. I work for 5G Solution Private Limited. And I'm an Echo Certified Developer. developer. With me, uh, I have Nikhil Sukul. So hi, everybody. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Last session, huh? Yes. Of DrupalCon Asia. No. Excited, everybody, for tomorrow's sprint? Yes. yes. We should be. So I am working as a senior Drupal architect in, in 5G Solutions. OK? So I'm working with this firm for a long time now. OK? So let's start, not so long, but yeah. Long enough to do a lot of contributions in Drupal. So let's start with this session of isomorphic JavaScript with Drupal. Ready, everybody? Yes. OK? So just to get a feel, uh, feel of audience, how many of you know uh, isomorphic concept? So what, 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 do you, uh, what do you know about isomorphic? Exactly. OK. So the topics which are going to cover are what is isomorphic JavaScript? Why isomorphic JavaScript? Why this instinct idea? Then the sites which are using isomorphic JavaScript, the sites which are in production. Then how to isomorph available libraries, which library we can use to build uh, our isomorphic applications. Then we'll look on isomorphic JavaScript with Drupal. So we have prepared a small demo using Drupal. And last, we'll see the code. OK, so let us start with what is isomorphic JavaScript. So isomorphic, as the term goes, is actually means iso means same, and morphic means form. It was actually coined by Charles, Charles Robbins, Charlie Robbins actually, uh, in 2011 in one of his blogs. And what he was actually talking about is that we can actually share the same JavaScript code in client as well as on server. So that was actually he was talking about. His vision was that we need to have JavaScript frameworks or JavaScript libraries which actually have the which actually have the same JavaScript code, which will be executed same on the server as well as on the client. So what exactly is isomorphic application? So in literal sense, isomorphic applications is a dynamic website, which literally means that it actually JavaScript-based website, everything is absolutely dynamic. It has a capability to generate its HTML. Well, uh, this term is not exactly very small here. We can have a separate session on it because it's actually talking about something known as virtual DOM. So there's a concept of virtual DOM, which is being there for a while now. Generally, we nowadays using virtual DOM in some of the libraries which are using isomorphic concept. Whereas in traditional JavaScript or traditional way, we were using structural DOM. So DOM, if you know, document object model. It's a way that HTML and JavaScripts are rendered, or HTML is rendered in a structured way in an HTML page. Virtual DOM is a way where when actually you can re-render the HTML based on the dynamic content. That's the whole idea of virtual DOM. And it's a capability of isomorphic application. Yes, that's what the last line is. Use same code in both server and the client. So actually, in this diagram, what you are seeing it's not actually ideal because as per the isomorphic application concept, the amount of code which need to be shared between client and the server should be at least 80 to 90%. So for the sake of this presentation, we are actually talking about with respect to Drupal and how we can share the code from Drupal to the browser. Though the isomorphic application can easily share the code for iOS or for Android. 
So we can actually use isomorphic applications code for any kind of platform. It's a cross-platform thing. You can actually use for iOS, Android, Microsoft, or anything. So why isomorphic JavaScript? Why we require isomorphic JavaScript? What is the need of it? So let's talk about a history behind web applications. So generally, the web application to start with was actually a server rendered application to start with. Long back when the web started, we are actually having the same kind of request coming from the browser, going to the server. The server was actually giving the entire application in either a static HTML format and or very minimal dynamic content on it. The entire HTML get rendered on the browser and then we can see the application or when we can see the website. So that was the traditional era. So very lately after that, people will start thinking that why only server side? Why can't we try something from the client side? So people started working with fat clients. Fat client means where lots of codes are already available from the on the browser itself rather than on the server side. And then nowadays, people are talking about a concept known as isomorphic web application. Don't worry, this is only the three things. In detail, we are coming in the slides anyways. So let's talk about in detail. In the server rendered application, so let's talk about server rendered application. So ideal scenario, in a server rendered application, you actually have a DOM manipulation and user interface on the client side. And you have view layer, application logic, routing, persistence, which actually your data layer on the server side. It can be on any language. It can be in Drupal, Ruby, Python, you name it. It will be on the server side itself. The flow which in which happens is, is from the browser side, on the client side, we actually get a request. And then from the server side, we get a response. And again, if you want another request, it will come from the server side. And again, we get a response. Sorry, from the client side, and again we get a response from the server side. The request response loop is keep on happening. So for every request coming from the client, there will be an ideal response coming from the server. This is the ideal scenario in server rendered applications. So if a client is sending a request to the server, what happens in the background? So the server will send a response. The client will download the response. The response downloading, the response means actually having only the static HTML empty divs. And then it will render that HTML. But what will follow after that, it will download starting the assets. The assets means it can be JavaScript assets, images, and all those things. And when the JavaScript assets and images are downloaded, it will start executing those scripts. This is a very standard way of server rendered application, right? So what happens in server and application? What is the advantages of it? Server renders the content, yeah. And nowadays in server and application, you can actually have using AJAX or jQuery, a lot of effects if you want in server and applications. It will serve HTML first load, and it is very, very fast. Definitely, from server and application, if your performance is optimized, your time to load that particular page will be very fast, right? And the web page will be SEO friendly. So the search engines can actually do a lot of SEO on it and it will be have in the Googles or anywhere on the top 10 or the top 10 sites of the world. But what happens, what is the disadvantage of it? Maintaining UI and render logic in both client and server. So what happens is you need to have logic. I'm not talking about JavaScript, I'm talking about logic. So in case of logic, you need to have some logic to render the things on the server then on the same logic you need to have on the client. It can be with the JavaScript logic, it can be the server logic. So what happens, you have a duplication of logic. You have two languages, two frameworks, two development stack, or two templates, whatever way you think of. It's all duplicated, right? So it's not easy to maintain. So the idea what came up after that was rather than maintaining all this, let's create a client rendered applications. Why not we have a client rendered thing rather than having a server rendered application? So in the client internet application, it was actually a concept of a fat client. So we have a DOM manipulation user interface, view layer, application logic, routing, all on the browser based thing. And on the server side, wow, my server is very, very thin. 
What it has is only have database. Just get the connection and have it. So the client will request for persistence, that is only for data, and then the request will be, uh, response will be sent by the server to the client, and that's the way it works. But in that case, think of a mobile, think of a browser in mobile. This fat client thing won't work there. It's too heavy. It won't work in this kind of scenarios. We actually want an ideal scenario in which both should work in a same direction and sharing the same amount of code. Otherwise, my browser will be too heavy on the client side, which is not actually acceptable, right? Nowadays, nobody try to have a browser which is very, very heavy. It will crash it. Or your mobile will crash or hang or something. So what happens when you have a, server, a client requesting for a client rendered application? So the server will send a response. The client will download the response. It will download the assets. It will execute the scripts. It will fetch the data if it is API. And I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. It's still loading. It's showing me a spinner on my page. And haven't got anything till now on my browser. Then it rendered the template. And now I got an HTML. <coughs> so think about it that it's taking so much of time to do a client rendered application. What we used to get is animated things, loading GIFs. We used to get that on the browser. It's keep on loading, 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 and loading, and suddenly you get the browser, and everything come at once. And we don't have patience of so many minutes or seconds to wait and get all these things. <clears throat> so in client rendered application, what is the advantage of it? Yes, in client rendered, again, it renders the content as the server side. It is separate application logic and data retrieval because a lot of logic is there on the client side and the server side is different. Yeah, you have very much optimistic UI. The UI can be proper. You can actually make drag drop application on the browsers if you require a client rendered application. It's very, very heavy, right? And then the examples can be Gmail. Offline Gmail is actually a application which is client rendered. You can actually use that. Or you're using it already. I hope so. And what happens, what is the disadvantage of it? So let's think about SEO. It's not SEO friendly. Lot of JavaScript code and everything is available within that HTML page. And user have to wait. That's what we just saw. Few seconds or minutes to load the spinner and then see the content. And yeah, it's very expensive for the maintenance goes. To summarize, in the client rendered application, server rendered application, so server initial load is good, client bad. And the server SEO is good, client bad. In the server user experience not so good because you actually have to render from the server itself. In the client it's good. I mean you can actually make the UI very good. So what we should do, we should do for server rendered application or client rendered application? Yes, so uh, like we have always seen the comparison between the server and the client. So we need to think about the best of the both worlds. So we can implement isomorphic JavaScript over here. So let's see the diagram, the basic diagram which we can get when you search the isomorphic. So we can have a client, we have a shared JavaScript and the backend. So the shared uh, JavaScript contains view layer, application logic, and routing. So this is the main core part for the isomorphic <coughs> application. If you see the flow for isomorphic JavaScript uh, application, uh, for the first time request, so we have DOM manipulation user interface. You just set a request for a, uh, some data, goes to the shared JavaScript. At this time, our shared uh, JavaScript render as the backend at the server side. So what happened, we get a request from a client, it processes, manipulates it, and sends a response back to the client. So while sending the uh, response to the client, it also sent view layer, application logic, routing, that you share JavaScript to the client. So what happened for the second request, the subsequent request? So again, we do a request. So this time, it won't go to the server because we already have a, our shared JavaScript in the client side. So we have a request. It is getting served by our JavaScript. 
because we have application logic it manipulates the request it builds a virtual dom over here and sends a response back to the client again we have a request it again goes to the uh, our stage javascript and send the response so as you can see uh, we have grayed out request and response to the server it doesn't mean that request will never go to the server if we do a, a hard refresh a page so at that time the request will go to the server so let's see what happened uh, for the isomorphic application for the first time request so we have a server response it download the response and user can see the content at the same time it will download the app logic and a render updated app so the client is now having uh, all manipulation uh, all javascript and for a subsequent request so it will not go to the server it will come to the load app logic it will paste the request it will do the manipulation build virtual dom and sends back to the server back to the clients so this happens for all the subsequent requests so let's uh, talk about view layer so view layer is really made up of our different components and if you are trying to uh, pass our view layer to the uh, client and server so we need to make it uh, this layer as an isomorphic so what are the components markup markup is html the template part then we have data presentation so we get data from the server we need to massage it somewhere because we need to like make it more uh, effectively to the client side so we need to add some css javascript and all the beautification part then we have internationalization we have date currency formatting like date picker is a good example because we don't we, once we click on the date picker so it automatically populate the calendar then we have url formatting so basically we need uh, for our isomorphic javascript we need to uh, pass our template our uh, to the isomorphic so why all this trouble why we need this one because we want our performance so uh, it it improved page load speed because we have uh, for first time request is fast but for the subsequent request is more fast seo it's scrollable single page app so currently google provides the support for isomorphic apps because your clients uh, now google can index your uh, client page it's flexible because your same code is running both on client and the server and because it is flexible it's also easy to maintain we have a single code to maintain so the the maintainability cost is automatically get uh, low so let's see what are the sites which are currently using isomorphic okay so let's talk about the sites using isomorphic javascript one of the good examples is flickr so you can see here we have lot of pictures of taj mahal so when i search for taj mahal i get a list like this and then when you click on any of the image you get like this so you get a pop up which actually shows you the image and then it shows the related content for that particular image and it's all being done by isomorphic way so flickr is a very good example of how to use isomorphic application so what flickr uses is actually mojito so mojito is a framework which is actually a successor of modown so flickr was actually using a framework known as modown and then they discontinued it and make it as mojito so mojito is a framework a javascript framework which is used by flickr to get the isomorphic effect here another example is instagram surprisingly instagram is not actually using it right now for the production sites but they actually implemented this for their sandbox for a while and this is also using an isomorphic concept here so here if i click on a picture i get a pop up like this and actually in the pop up you can see there are lot of information available and what kind of framework they were using 
is React. So React is one of the best isomorphic framework or library you can say available. And they were actually using in the back end as Python. So Django is a Python framework they were using in the back end. So they tried to experiment it in their sandbox. And that time they actually tried using React with Django. Do you think Drupal is far behind? No. So Lullabot, around seven to eight months back, launched their isomorphic site. So Lullabot is actually using isomorphic. Can we have a round of applause for Lullabot? <laughs> because they are Drupal. <laughs> so, so Lullabot is using, the way they are using Drupal is, and the way they're using isomorphic is, they're using React, they are using Node.js, CoachDB in front of it, and Drupal as a backend CMS. So they're actually using their, these four technologies to have this isomorphic thing done. So not only Lullabot, there are so many more. So Facebook is anyway using it. Everybody knows Facebook, React is actually from Facebook, so Facebook will be using it definitely. Yahoo is using it. Asana, Asana is a very good site. Go and check it out. It's actually a task management tool. It's a browser-based task management tool. Try to check it out. It's very, very user-friendly. It's actually using isomorphic application behind it. Then we have Rising Stack, Airbnb, and all. So everybody, lot of things I have been using isomorphic here. Yeah, so actually, how to isomorph? How we can build an isomorphic application? So if I uh, categorize isomorphic JavaScript, so it can be categorized into two part. One is environment agnostic, and second one is as per environment. Environment agnostic does not depend on any client specific properties or browser specific properties. So like we have a window, we have process.environment, request.cookies, so it does not depend on any of the uh, browser or client specific properties. As per environment, it provides environment specific properties, so one can expose a single API, but under the hood there are actually two environments running. Then it's like it's a, uh, it has window.location.path name, request.path, abstraction, so one of my favorite is set cookies. So if you have to set the cookies at the client side, so we use document.cookie, then cookie name, and the value. And on the server side, we have response.set header, and then set header name, cookie name, and the cookie value. And the green, uh, on the green, in the green, you can see uh, we are using React. So it's use set cookie, cookie name, and cookie value. So we don't have to write it two times, like client and server. We can use a set cookie for both. Redirects, same thing. So we have document.location.href and the destination URL. And if you want to do some more HTML5 things, more fancy part, so we can use state and the destination thing. And on the server side, we have response.redirect. And we are sending an HTTP header over here. And if we see on the isomorphic part, so this dot transition to and the destination you are. So writing a cookies, uh, like if we take an example for cookies, so we have some other properties like uh, domain name, path, and then expires. So it's a complete string. But if we write on isomorphic, we can write in this way. We have cookie, cookie name, then path, domain, expires. So it's like an array uh, format, we can say. So it's quite easy then, that complete string, big string. So there are many JS library which are isomorphic, and some of them we are already using. So let's see uh, which are those. React, Biscuit, Nazo, Tender, Meteor, Mojito. So there are lots of things. I'm mostly interested on React, Render and Meteor. As per my understanding, uh, these are the mostly used for uh, isomorphic applications. So React, a JavaScript library for building a user interface. 
Uh, Meteor is a JavaScript app platform that builds apps. And Render is a small library that allows you to run a backbone apps. So we'll be taking a React for our uh, demo purpose. So React is basically uh, introduced by, uh, by Facebook. And why we have taken React? So it has some advantages. So it's new, uh, like a JavaScript library for building user interface. It's just open source, it's a library. Uh, we have, it's new and fashionable, new, because we have uh, released from uh, 2013 and the stable was released on 28th of January 2016, just quite a days before. It uses a virtual DOM and syncs only the change part. So uh, if we have to change a specific part of a web page, like it can be a, a blog, it can be a region, it can be a header, it can be a footer, so we can use it. JSX, it's in JavaScript XML, so it helps a developer to write an HTML-like syntax that compiles down to JavaScript. React puts HTML into JavaScript. So all the HTML part, the ta tags, div, span, table, all goes into a JavaScript. It's lightweight as compared to other libraries and framework. So that's the reason we have chosen React. So if you see a simple application, if we have to build on React, so uh, we have a simple HTML page. On the header part, we have script tag. So it used build slash react.js. And then we have a JX transformer.js. So that's a JX library. So if, even if you use the react.js, so it will, like, uh, you can build your apps. And on the, on the body part, we have an empty div, which has ID block slider. And we have a script type text slash JavaScript. And our React code will go over here. Let's see how. So uh, we have react.render, and then we are printing a hello world over here. So how it is get replaced? It's replaced by get element by ID. So if we uh, do a more specifically using React, so we can build a component. Components are basically a functions uh, in React. So uh, we have a component, my component, then we have a react.create class, render function, then hello world, and it's again uh, pass the value to the top bit. So I saw a JavaScript with Drupal, how we can implement this one. So I searched down on the, on the uh, Drupal.org, I found uh, React with two modules, React and Re my React JS. So basically React is for the, uh, this, this React is basically download all the libraries and it's provide a libraries API. And then my React JS, it's an, uh, a, a test module where they are building a pie chart using React. And then we have a Meteor, it's a sandbox project and not been updated from a while. Uh, for render, we don't have any module. There are some risks with the React. <coughs> still growing, as the stable version is already released on uh, January. So it's still growing. Debugging is trickier. We don't have any tools such now to debug the uh, React applications. Then avoid exposing sensitive data. Because what uh, we, are pass we are creating a uh, a code which is getting sh shared by client and the server, so we should not like use it for sensitive sites, sensitive data. And then need to put number of libraries for routing, enforcing unconditional uh, flows, web APIs called testing, dependency, and all. Different ways to declare a component. So the, the example which we have seen, so there are different ways to declare the same component. So I think we have already talked much about the isomorphic. So let's see the code. So this is the demo which we have built. We, <coughs> have, we have used our Pytech site and we have changed the slider. So only the block part you see, we have just made it as isomorphic. So if we click on the navigation part, So we have panels, layout, duration, ease. So there are different options we can use. 
So it's like quite fancy part. So it, previously we were using this thing like uh, from views, we used to change this, uh, the view slideshow and then save it out and then again go to the home page or where we have configured the block. So let's see the code behind this one. So I have created a simple module, demo underscore react. <coughs> this is an info file which has a style sheet, a simple CSS which uh, we have written on for uh, this um, demo. And then we have a react.min.js where we actually implemented the react. <coughs> and we have created a one more JS, demo underscore react.js. That's a that's a custom one. This is done in Drupal 7? Yes, yeah. it's in Drupal 7. So we have created a simple block. We have a block underscore hook underscore block underscore info. Info, it shows my slider. Then it is a block underscore view. Subject as my slider, then it's called a function. Okay. So uh, we have Drupal get path model name and then it's called a JSON URL. So this JSON URL can be from any uh, uh, third party um, JSON. Currently, we have created a view using data source. So we have a JSON data format over here. We have used a single field, image field over here. And if I click on the demo part, so we have a JSON over here. So basically, a, a complete URL for the image. So we have created a array variable over here and then we can we are all storing all the image URLs over on this variable. Then we have created a uh, Drupal at JS where we are passing this variable to our React JS file. And then we have a theme. So maybe all logic goes on the slider isomorphic template. Let's see. Oh, we don't have anything on this one. We have div ID slider content this text will get replaced by react. So let's see on the uh, demo part. Let's see the view source of this one. So as you can see, we have a div ID over here, which shows this text will get replaced by React. Even on the source, we don't have the code. So where it's come from? So we have demo underscore react dot js. So this code is already available on Drupal and we, it's, a, it's an open source. So we have downloaded from there. So what we have done over here, We have passed the ID for the div, which we want to replace. And at the bottom, we have passed the URL, the image URLs. That is an array. So basically, it includes a class initialization and the render and this gives effect of a slider and that's all for the demo for isomorph yes so if you guys have any questions, please ask. We are ready for it. Any modules available for this uh, actual market? I don't look out. So basically, we had uh, one model that name the name of the model is React. Okay. There's one more model, my React JS, 
basically uh, we, we, we can use uh, like react model what it does it just download all the libraries for the react and my react uh, js is an a model which has been built for just for the demo purpose it has the feature it has uh, c tools and data views so basically it's uh, it creates a content type at the back end and you can like expose the, all the data via json over there and you can just build a pie chart they have used a pie chart library they pass all their data to that pie chart and they build a graph over there in d8 anything uh, uh, not sir not yet any other yes so in the view source you Yep. So, if in spinner day if I'm, there is no data, just the actual markup of the blocks, then how will crawler, uh, or it will affect the ACL processor, right? So, like we have a react.js, the, the implementation, so the, uh, Google is smart enough to like uh, call that uh, JavaScript, so it will paste from there. So, what happens is, in case of React, as what, what you have studied, the only a uh, search engine which is actually able to work for isomorphic JavaScript is Google right now. And they say that they are able to search inside it. But you are right that as per the view source code, we are just replacing that particular thing dynamically. So yeah, the crawler uh, won't able to get that. Yeah. In, in like not only crawler, like it's not only maybe of a React like it's a page with Angular. So if I uh, take, any, take, take any link from that and I place it in like just Slack or Facebook, the title and the meta description are coming from API. Right. So instead of showing the title and the description of uh, the data, it's uh, giving me the tags. The Correct. Tags. Correct. So how to uh, resolve those searches? Yes. So I have worked with Angular JS, and Angular is more of a framework than uh, a library. And they both have a different things altogether. But Angular is more in that perspective, but yes, the SU is not there there also. So I don't think currently we have a solution on it, but we can search on it. Currently I don't think in Angular we have a solution for it. My own site is in Angular, I am still struggling on it. Yeah. But in React what they said is as per the Google goes, they actually do that, but I don't know how. But we need to search on it. Yeah, no, they're not only uh, doing that, they're also using Node.js in front of it. So it's here, we don't have any Node.js thing. We only have Drupal and we only have React. <coughs> there they have four things, as we have seen the slide. So they have Node.js, CoachDB, Drupal. So there are four things involved, and that's why they were able to get that effect. So a lot of push thing is happening from the Node.js which is not possible in case of normal Drupal application. It's more of get and then post. So we are just creating an application where it's more of only using Drupal and how you can do React. Yeah, so SEO is one of the things which we need to take off. Yeah. Any other? Okay, so thanks a lot. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. And please give us the feedback, which is there here. Thank you. Thank you.